But hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Mark Crypto Boy in Oz. There's my Aussie accent for you, which was absolutely shocking. It is, what day is it actually? What day is it? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, the 20th of July. And the 20th of July is a special day because I've still got 27 subscribers, but mainly it's a special day because it's my brother's birthday and my brother is 40 today. He's officially old. Um, younger than me, but he's officially old. Um, and there's two things I know he won't be doing today. One, he won't be going to work because he has never worked on his birthday. Ever. And I think from his high school years, I don't actually think he's ever been to school on his birthday as well. I could be wrong there, but I'm pretty, pretty sure. Um, and secondly, what do most people do on birthdays? especially big ones, milestones, 30, 40s, they probably get absolutely hassled. Well and truly hassled. And for anyone that don't know what that means, it means drunk, shit-faced, pissed. Legless. And yeah, Gavin doesn't really drink an awful lot, so I would say that he's um, probably going to have several cups of tea, um, and that's probably as far as he'll go. So anyway, happy birthday, brother. You've no present. You've got a card, it's personalised, it's witty. Hopefully it'll make you smile. It's good enough. So anyway, I just thought I'd brush over that point. I couldn't really mention the date without mentioning my brother's birthday because it's obviously forefront in my mind. And the reason for the video today is is basically because it's a it's a shocking day. And sometimes I just think, what what do you do? Like you've got the, the reason for the video is because a lot of people panic. And it's like you, you you're looking at your charts every day and you see you see what you've bought and you see the value of it in USD dwindle and dwindle and dwindle and it's been dwindling to be honest. No matter when you buy, if you bought any if you bought any time um from yesterday back, even when you thought it were a good deal, it's gone down. So I don't know, if you bought pretty much from I'd say from January, um all the way through to now, July, you can pretty much have bought it at any point from January to July, and you're probably down in value now. I think the only time you'll be in profit now is if you bought from December last year, and you probably break even point, more or less, depending on certain coins have performed better than others, but on average, you're probably at break even if you bought in December last year, which is a depressing thought because you've rode the wave up to 64k Bitcoin and everything else has gone up with it, and... What's happened? Most people didn't cash out because they didn't believe it. They didn't believe it with the top. They stayed in and dwindled all the way back down. And you and you kind of realise you've you think you've lost all those gains. And you, in, in a way, you have. But at the end of the day, if you're not in it, you can't win it. So I just knuckle down, keep hold of what you've got, and don't stress too much about it. If you bought at the top at sixty four k, um, you might feel like you're screwed now. And I'm, when I say sixty four k, I'm not just referring to Bitcoin. I'm I'm kind of referring to if you bought any crypto when Bitcoin was at 64k, then everything else respectively was at all time highs as well. So whatever coin you got at them prices, they were at all time highs. So you might think you're screwed, and you might think, oh my god, if this is the bear market, I am I'm well and truly buggered. But you're not, because if in doubt, zoom out. Look at 2017 when it was the all time highs. And you bought a 20k or 19k Bitcoin or equivalent with all the other altcoins and it would drop down and everything went down to 95% off Bitcoin, 90% down. And you're just stressed and you're worried and panicked and you didn't know what to do. Well, just zoom out and then look look forward in time and see where your coins are. And, and if you had, obviously, alternative coins besides Bitcoin, a lot of these coins, have they've, they've gone up. 100x some of them have gone up a thousand x depending on the project um 100 x is like a a lot if you'd have bought if you'd have bought more stock coins in 2018 in the bear market uh, or 20 or even 2019 the beginning of 2020 there's so many coins that have 100 x it's unbelievable even now even now if you'd have bought like in march april 2020 like even coins now so many of them will be 100x on what they were when you bought them. Even even after the massive price correction from 64k Bitcoin down to what it is now. So <clears throat> the video is, what do you do? Right now, 
what do you do? And my advice to you, and again, I'm sorry, I, I forgot you were looking at this screen. I didn't want to be sharing this screen for so long. So you've had, I'm sorry, you had five minutes of just looking at me. So I've got two screens now I want to share with you before I come back to the question, what do you do? So I've got this screen and I've got this screen. And I just wanted to know which one you prefer. Now, there's only 27 of you, probably 26 or 25 that have got an opinion that matters because I think a couple of them are our family. We're not saying your opinion doesn't matter, <clears throat> but in all likelihood, you're not watching it. You're just doing, being nice, following me, which I've not asked anybody to do. Um, so when I've got these 27 subscribers, genuinely, um, without people subscribing voluntarily without me knowing i don't know who the subscribers are by the way um you probably can check but i'm not that technically savvy or bothered where i've man, i've wanted to actually identify the my subscribers um but yeah I've, it's not like i've asked people to follow me because if i had i'd have a lot more than 27 subscribers but i don't want false followers i want followers that are genuinely genuinely interested in crypto um so yeah back to back to this my, my screen so this screen is my original screen it's got the price ticker on the bottom which i thought were pretty cool but then I re i've realized recently it's only pretty cool for me because i'm the only person that can see live prices of the um live projects what are going on because i'm watching it live you're not you're watching pre-recorded unless you're watching the premiere which is literally right after it's published still out of date mind you um you're not seeing the prices so that's why i've done a new one where i've moved my video about and kind of expanded the screen a little bit so yeah i just wondered what you guys think i mean this, the actual screen is a little smaller um but yeah just just your opinion just wondered what you just wondered what your thoughts were i'll stick with this one for now because it's not got the price ticker on it um might have a play and do another one but anyway i just thought i'd bring that up um so yeah the the question is what do you do so I'm just going to jump to CMC and just look how depressing it is. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty damn depressing, isn't it? When you look at, when you look at it on here. In fact, I'm going to go back. Um, just give me a second because I want the thirty day. I want the thirty day on here, and then do they do? Oh, they don't do it. I'll do that. Why all changes? So where's the 30 day? Oh, we are. I can't move it. Oh, well, I probably can. I can't be bothered in a minute. But if you look at Bitcoin, for the last 30 days, it's down 14%. Whereas Ethereum's down 18%. Binance coin down 20%. But see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about... I mean, this isn't even overall. This is like the last 12 months to date. Binance coin is up 607%. Ethereum's up 140%, Cardano's up 500% or over. I mean, Dogecoin is just, I mean, Christ, 2,867%. So it's over 200, 200x. So long term, doesn't really matter what happens short term, but that doesn't help you when you've bought basically from January up to now. Whatever you pay, whatever you paid for your crypto from January up to now, you chances are you you you'll probably look if you're at break even, but more than more than likely you're down. You're down quite a bit on what you what you actually had. And the question is, what do you do? And I ask myself that, like, what do I do? And just to give you an idea how it can make you feel, just jump on my portfolio. So. My current balance for my four-year plan portfolio is $9,300. But then you look at my profit and loss. Look at it. I mean, the investment what I've put into Giro Wallet is down $1,500. My Polkadot, $1,100. XRP and so on and so on and so on. So I'm actually down more than I care to admit. Like, I mean, look at Refinable. Oh my God. I, mean, I didn't invest that much. At one b and I think it was at the time, and it's $714 down. 
Um, so it can get pretty depressing. And when I look at the money that I've put into it and it's, it's, it's gone the opposite direction than what I wanted it to go. And let me tell you, I'll show you my super. My super is even worse. I actually invested $25,000 into my super. And it's probably actually more now. 20, no, I'd say about 20, over 26 because I've been contributing on a weekly basis as well. So $26,000 and it's now this price. So it can make you kind of sick. And I've not actually updated it, to be honest. So my USDC isn't that. I've I actually reinvested that. So my, my actual total is, is the same. So what I've invested in, what I've invested in hasn't changed my my overall current price at all, um, but I wish I'd kept it because I'd have bought back, I'd have bought back even lower at the prices what they're at now. I mean Polygon sixty six cents, XRP fifty two, Ada. I mean Ada's probably the best performing one where it's keeping above a dollar. Kasama. I mean Christ, all time highs are six hundred and fifty dollars. I think and it's hundred and fifty. And the question is, the question is, the question is, what you're going to be asking is, what do you do? And I'll tell you what I do and what I'm doing is forgetting about it. And I've actually ordered, which I should have ordered a long time ago. And I suggest everyone who's watching this goes and order it. Cause it's actually on special on uh, Amazon at the minute, the Bitcoin standard. So go and buy yourself the Bitcoin standard and do a bit of leisurely reading, switch off crypto. If you've no money to dollar cost average, switch it off and just kind of have have a few days where you're just ignoring it. And I, I, what I'm doing, which obviously not at the minute because I'm watching the charts as I'm doing the video, but I'm I'm started reading the Bitcoin standard because it's something that every crypto um, noob enthusiast that's that wants to go down the rabbit hole or started going down the rabbit hole should be reading. It's like it's like saying you're religious but you've not read the Bible. Um, and it's the same thing with crypto. And you can't say that about, like, if you spend money, you need to read such a book because there hasn't been one. Ah, until now. So the guy who created the Bitcoin standard, can't think of the guy's name now, but I'm going to bring it up. So here we are. Now, the book isn't actually available yet. This is, so, um, Safadine Amos, who wrote this book, and basically every Bitcoin professional out there um, endorses this book by um, basically the best book to, that explains Bitcoin by a mile. And so any, anyone that's into crypto should be going out and buying this book. And don't worry, I'm not plugging myself. I've no affiliate links. Just jump on Amazon and Google the Bitcoin standard. And he's also done a new book, which isn't on Amazon yet, and it's called The Fiat Standard. So probably like everyone that's into Bitcoin should be reading that book, and everybody that spends fiat, which is the entire planet, should be watching The Fiat Standard. But I, I would suspect um, the powers that be in the governments probably prefer you not to because they'll realise then how you, um, uh, that, you, that you understand money and how non-existent it is and, and how little value or how it's got no value. And I, I presume it'll probably wake everybody up to what money really is and how governments kind of control everything and basically create an asset, well, create something that's going to deflate year on year on year that's going to be worth less and less and less. Don't get me wrong, a dollar will always be a dollar, a pound will always be a pound, a euro will always be a euro, but what it can buy will always be less and less and less until you get to the point where obviously you need to earn a hell of a lot more to buy the same old the same old stuff. So anyway, I'm not I'm not plugging. Um so I'm not benefiting at all from if you bought this book or not, but I'm just I've ordered it. And I'm going to read it this next week because I'm a slow reader and I probably need to read it twice because I can't digest anything that I read. Um, or I might do the audio book, uh, possibly. Um, but I've, I've, got, I've bought the book, so I'll probably have a go at reading it. So I'm going to do that and take some time out from crypto because I, personally, on a personal story, I've 
invested all the money I've got at the minute into my uh, four-year plan, which I don't have any more money. I've pretty much invested everything that I've got. Um, when I do get some more cash, when, sorry, when it comes through in dribs and drabs, um, I'll be adding to, I mean, everything's so cheap. I'll be adding to, I'll be knuckling down on Giro Wallet. Because end it there, I've got 111 polka dot. Now, the way I look at it, the way I look at it is, polka dot is going to be worth a hell of a lot more in the future. Um, XRP could be worth a hell of a lot more in the future. But the, the the market cap at the minute is also very high. The, the position on coin market cap is also very high. So in my eyes, Polkadot is never going to 100x. Because it already has to get here in the first place. XRP, it's not going to 100x. And I'm not saying they won't, but it's going to be a long time before they do. I'm looking at I'm looking at projects which have got smaller market caps. Um, so not that I'm not investing in Polkadot and XRP. I obviously am. Um, they're just there they're to accumulate, obviously, more wealth, but not life-changing wealth. It's the, it's the projects like Giro Wallet. Um, even, to be honest, even Hex, I only put $500 in, but that could be worth a hell of a lot more going forward. I don't think it's obviously ever going to be more than $50. I mean, ten dollars are probably being a push, but like um, Charlie Three, could this hundred X? I think it could. I think it could get to hundred dollars, uh, probably two cycles away, because this is this is like an oracle that at the minute Chainlink has got like the monopoly on the entire uh, oracle kind of platform, more or less. I think it's like eighty five percent of all pla all blockchains. Um, use all, all well all projects I should say that run on blockchains use or use uh, Chainlink, but Charlie Three is native to obviously as you know Cardano. Or it's going to be when it moves over. It's currently sat on um, Ethereum, but as soon as the mainnet launches, it'll move over. Um, Polygon, I think this could hundred x from where it is, and it already has to get to where it is. But it's sixty seven cents. Could it be sixty seven dollars? Two cycles away. Possibly, yeah. I think it could be. So it's a com it's a combination of like all my projects, what I believe in, that can generate life changing wealth. And when the price comes down so much, where you've lost so much value in your portfolio, you've no more cash to invest. What do you do? Well, the simple answer is, you just hold it. So you don't do anything with it. You hold it. And if looking at your charts makes you feel sick. And it makes you want to do silly things where you might think, oh, well, if I sell it and move it to something else, I'll make more. Like you might look at it and think, okay, right. XRP has dropped 9.9%. Polkadot has dropped 13 So if I sell XRP um, and then buy Polkadot, it's dropped less in 24 hours. And then you might think, well, if it recovers, if it recovers, uh, faster or the same, then I can transfer it back again and benefit that small percentage. But believe me, nine times, out, well, 99 times out of 100, that probably doesn't work unless you're a prof professional trader. Um, I'd probably say that's not the best, the best thing to do. I'd just, I'd just say buy it and hold it. And that's what I'm doing. Everything that I've got, I purposely staked, as I've talked about on previous videos, so because I've staked it, it takes the temptation away to do anything with it. Like everything, the only thing that isn't staked is Giro Wallet um, and I think, or oh, Charlie 3. I think that is the only things that aren't staked because I can't stake them. I don't think you can stake Charlie 3 or Giro at the minute. Or Well, you can do the liquid, liquidity pool. Um, you can create liquidity pools, but I don't want to because I don't want no impermeable loss. Um, I don't. I'd sooner just. I'd sooner just keep it than do a do a lick, um, than put it in a pool with the two other coins. Where they are both a bit compl complicated to explain, but there is a chance of losing um, one coin over another or adjusting your, so say I've got 22,000 Giro wallet and you could put it in a liquidity pool with another coin like wrapped ether, for instance, then 
the the total amount has got to be equal to each other. So I think if one moves more than another, then you could end up with less Giro wallet and more ETH. And I don't want that because I want my Giro wallet to stay minimum of what they're at now, 22,500 coins, because I believe in long, I believe in long term, it's going to go through, through the roof. So anyway, so what I'd recommend if you've got excess cash, you're still not you're still not all in with crypto. Then again, I'd be buying now. Uh, probably not all of it. Just keep laddering in. But it's hard because obviously, if you only got so much money, and prices are coming down so much, you've got to kind of weigh up how, how lower is it going to go? Is it going to go any lower than it is? And in the grand scheme of things, does it really matter? Like if you bought Giro Wallet now at ten cents, um, if it went to eight cents or seven cents. Okay, it's good, but if Giro well, it gets to twenty dollars, does that really matter? Um, obviously, you'd have a, you'd have you'd have more more Giro wallet when it gets to twenty dollars. So, but in in realistic terms, you're never going to buy the bottom. It's unless you're very 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 lucky. So I just dollar cost average and just start buying when you've got the money and you're comfortable, and if you've no money. Just buy an old and just just switch off. Don't even bother, um, kind of getting worked up about it because when you see dares like this, which this is just today. Like if I jump to weekly, it can it can mess with you a little bit, and it, it and it's to be honest, it's it's your money. It's your money what you've invested in. And when you look at when you look at Cardano, if you'd invested, you're 18% down, you're 23% down in Uni, 22% in Link, 33 in Theta. Um, it's like it's not a good, it's not a good feeling at all. I mean, then if we go to go to monthly, I mean, Dot is down 50%, Theta's down 60. It's um. It can be pretty soul destroying when you start looking at the numbers, and then you get the odd one which is completely completely reversed. I mean, compound. I mean, that's up twenty three percent on the month, but these are like exceptions. But then, if you look on the yearly, this is what I, this is what you've got to get into your head. Whatever you've got. Can often look like this. Often, like every week, it can look like this at some point. But when you zoom out, look at this. Look, when you zoom out, look at Matic 100x, Bitcoin 2.3x, ETH 3.5x, BNB almost 6x. If you're not happy with these kind of these kind of returns, then there's something drastically wrong. And that's where you've got to kind of pick yourself up off the floor and kind of think, okay, well, hang on a minute. I'm being a bit I'm being a bit dramatic when uh something's gone down 25, 30% in a week. Just zoom out and look at the look at the big picture and look at what what your what your um projects could be worth in 12 months time. And if you if you made a mental note of all these figures here, you looked at the price, and then you 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 came back to this and revisited this again in like three four years after the next cycle, and then again after the next cycle after that, because again you don't really know as well what's going to happen with the projects. You don't really know if they're going to change. Like look at Ethereum; it's gone from proof of work to proof. Well, it's going from proof of work to proof of stake, and not only that, they've actually when when they implement the new um, the new change as well. They're actually burning, burning ETH for every transaction. So it's becoming deflationary. So it's going from 115 million coins. Um, and I think on average, it's going to, it's going to reduce. I'm sure that um, if they'd have implemented, if they'd have, if they'd have implemented the burning of ETH per transactions, I think over the last 12 months, they'd have burned something like two and a half million ETH. So if you think in 10 years, there's going to be 25 million less ETH. And in, and that's not really reality, because if you think in 10 years from now, 
Ethereum, Ethereum's use case and adoption is going to be so much bigger, so much bigger. So how are you getting like the burning two and a half million um, ETH in transaction fees like right now? That isn't going to be what's happening in like five years. Well, two years, three years, four years. As time goes on, the amount of the amount, the amount of transactions is going to increase dramatically. So the the amount of Ethereum is that's going to be burned is going to be more and more and more. So the overall market, the overall uh, total supply of Ethereum, is going to be so much less. And you could argue that it's it, it could it could like as a store of a store of wealth. Um, it could be more beneficial to hold Ethereum than it, than than Bitcoin. Um, just because of the use case that it's got. So, yeah, if in doubt, just zoom out. Don't stress too much about your weekly, your daily and weekly prices. Because um, if you're holding it, if you're holding it and you believe in it, um, and it's it's a long term investment, long term like meaning, I'd say I don't know, three three years plus, then it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, I, the only thing I do get is how it makes you feel sick to the amount of coins that you could have bought if you'd have just not bothered investing when you did and invested now, which I do get. Because if if I look at this, um, I go to my super and I think I've invested $26,000. Now, if I'd have held off and invested now, I'd have had $11,000 more dollars to scoop up all these, all these projects. So rather than having... 4,300 Polygon, I could have had 7,000 or 8,000 XRP or 3,000 Cardano. But no point dwelling on things that you have no control over. Um, and if somebody said your investment of 25 grand is going to go down to 15 grand, but and if you're talking about the past, like you invest 25 grand. And in five years' time, that twenty-five grand is going to be worth a million dollars. But at some point, at some point, that twenty-five grand would have gone down to fifteen. Would you record? And the answer is no. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. So anyway, I'll not. I'll not take any more of your time. It's been good having a chat. Um. So I hope I've kind of cleared things up. Just, just hold, 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 hold. As George says, just hold. Hordal, because long term, it's going to create long term wealth. And when you come across any money where you've got the chance to invest a little bit more, just buy more as you go. Long term, it'll work out well. And again, I'm not talking from experience. Um, I'm talking from all what all the experts have been saying on past experiences, what they've they've actually gone through. Like George, he, that's all he's ever done, dollar cost average and hold hold them. So when I say this, I'm saying it like through your eyes as well. Um, it's not something that's happened to me. So when, when I say it, I'm trusting um, the method which other people have kind of said, this is how most people have actually got wealthy. It's just through buying and holding it for long term. And that's that's in, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's why I stake what I stake. So there's no temptation. And when I've got money, I just buy extra, um, buy extra coins. Like for instance, yesterday, ninety two Australian dollars went into my SwiftX account, and I bought um, I, what did I buy? I bought Rune. Uh, no Theta. I bought Theta. I didn't buy many. I just bought obviously what I could with that amount of money. Um, and I do that every week, and it's just dollar cost averaging. And hopefully, in four years' time, when we're all back here, we'll be able to paint a completely different picture of our, our portfolios and what they're worth. And then again, if you're all back with me again in eight years from now, we'll do exactly the same again. So if you like the video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you've got any friends that are into crypto that are just starting out, share the channel with me. Uh, sh sh sorry, share the channel with them. Um, and that's it. Invest well, my friends. Big projects, main projects, no Shiba in you or salute scam coins. Stay clear of them. And remember, there's a crypto boy in every one of you, every single one of you.